Hey, it's Dan Zimmerman. Welcome to Illustrate to Educate. Don't forget to subscribe for weekly objective videos on topics that matter. Did you miss any parts of the Democratic or Republican convention? No worries. I got you covered and I'll give you a simple summary of the highlights right here. The first day of the Democratic National Convention was the first completely virtual, made-for-TV event with the absence of delegates and an audience. The Democrats were looking to focus on two of the major issues facing the country, the coronavirus pandemic and the reckoning over racial injustice. One of the highlights was a speech by the former First Lady Michelle Obama. She criticized President Trump by saying he has had more than enough time to prove that he can do the job. He simply cannot be who we need him to be for us. She also made a direct appeal for people to get out and vote. Other Democrats spoke and started to build a case for the character of Joe Biden, describing him as someone who is real and of character and guided by faith. There was also the inclusion of several Republicans, including most notably former Ohio Governor John Kasich, who encouraged Americans to vote for Biden. Lastly, a speech by former opponent Bernie Sanders encouraged his voters to keep their eyes on the prize that the most important thing this year is defeating Trump. The second night focused on building the case for how Biden would restore a country with its current economic and public health struggles. The main speaker, Biden's wife, Jill Biden, delivered a speech that addressed her career as an educator with her story about how her partnership with Joe Biden began with an effort to heal a broken and grieving family. How do you make a broken family whole? The same way you make a nation whole, she said, with love and understanding and with small acts of kindness. Tuesday's program included testimonials from former presidents Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter. Clinton criticized Trump by saying, if you want a president who defines the job as spending hours a day watching TV and zapping people on social media, he's your man. Jimmy Carter, who is 95, voiced over a video that features pictures of Biden endorsing him during his 1976 campaign. Lastly, Democrats from each state and territory via satellite formally granted Joe Biden the title of his party's presidential nominee. On the third night, Kamala Harris made history with her formal nomination as the first black woman and person of Asian descent on a major party's national ticket. In her speech, she said, There is no vaccine for racism. We've got to do the work for our children, for all of us. She later talked about the inequities in healthcare, education, and the fight to combat racial injustice. Many of the speakers on the third night, such as Hillary Clinton and Elizabeth Warren, reminded Americans that they need to vote in the 2020 election. Later that night, former President Obama spoke on his contempt for President Trump and said, Donald Trump hasn't grown into the job because he can't, and the consequences of that failure are severe. 170,000 Americans dead, millions of jobs gone, while those at the top take in more than ever. On the final night, Joe Biden accepted his presidential nomination and gave an acceptance speech. He said, here and now I give you my word, if you entrust me with the presidency, I will draw on the best of us, not the worst. I will be an ally of the light, not of the darkness. Hunter and Ashley Biden, Biden's two surviving children, gave a taped introduction to their father. They made the case that their father is strong, caring, and a best friend. Then former presidential candidate and billionaire Michael Bloomberg encouraged the American people not to vote for or rehire Trump, saying he has failed the American people catastrophically. Other former candidates and contenders such as Buttigieg, Yang, and Booker gave their support for Biden, praising him for his support of gay marriage, his ability to help Americans out of our current struggles, and pulling us out of these dark times. Now let's take a look at the Republican National Convention. The first night opened with a variety of speeches that focused on the promise of America's future, countering what the party saw as a negative outlook put forward by the Democratic National Convention. A number of speakers praised the accomplishments of President Trump's administration before the coronavirus pandemic struck. Former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley touched on a number of issues during her speech, but spent much of it discussing how the country and Trump took a stronger stance against foreign enemies such as North Korea, Iran, and ISIS than during the Obama administration. Later, Senator Tim Scott commented on Biden's ignorance of the black community and claimed that Republicans will give them the best chance to achieve the American dream. The second night of the convention saw an address from the first black attorney general in Kentucky history, Daniel Cameron, a former convict who was granted a full pardon after he spoke. He used his convention address to convey a message of unity while also criticizing Democratic nominee Joe Biden for his remarks that he has made dealing with race. Cameron said, My mind is my own and you can't tell me how to vote because of the color of my skin. The convention also included footage of President Trump participating in a naturalization ceremony where he personally addressed new American citizens who had immigrated to the U.S. legally from Lebanon, Bolivia, India, Ghana, and Sudan. 
Also, the president's wife, Melania, delivered remarks that addressed the problems facing the country. Like all of you, I have reflected on the racial unrest in our country, and I encourage people to focus on our future while still learning from our past. Night 3 saw Vice President Mike Pence formally accept his nomination for Vice President. In his speech, he painted a dark picture of what the nation would look like if he and President Trump lose the election, warning that you won't be safe in Joe Biden's America. Pence also said that only Trump can be trusted to bring the country out of the pandemic and current economic struggles. Another speaker, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, praised Republican values while accusing Democrats of threatening the foundation of the country. She said, from Seattle and Portland to Washington and New York, Democrat-run cities across the country are being overrun by violent mobs. Lastly, former acting director of national intelligence Richard Grinnell spoke, praising Trump's foreign policy of opposing lengthy wars and getting other countries to pay their fair share in international agreements. On the final night of the Republican convention, President Trump accepted the party's nomination from the White House South Lawn. He said, in a new term as president, we will again build the greatest economy in history, quickly returning to full employment, soaring incomes, and record prosperity. Throughout the speech, Trump criticized his Democratic opponent, former Vice President Joe Biden, painting Biden as a radical left and urging voters to move away from the Democratic Party. The night also featured voter testimonials including Ann Dorn, whose husband David Dorn, a retired police captain, was killed by an individual looting a store during a protest for racial justice last June. Other speakers blamed Democrats for unrest around the country, while others praised Trump's record on criminal justice reform and support for communities of color. Did you enjoy this video about the Democratic and Republican National Conventions? Please like and subscribe to Illustrate to Educate. Share this video and don't forget to leave your thoughts about the conventions or other highlights I missed. And of course, feel free to check out some of my other videos to the right.